We've all seen those Subway ads featuring celebrities like Tony Hawk and Megan Rapino reminding us to eat fresh by ditching things like burritos and hamburgers for a sandwich from Subway. The idea is that Subway is a healthier option, but is this actually the case? A recent legal scandal involving Subway's tuna has many questioning the sandwich chain's integrity, among other things. In this video, we'll take a look at the saga of the Subway tuna scandal. According to Subway, their tuna sandwich is freshly baked bread layered with flaked tuna, blended with creamy mayo, and topped with your choice of crisp, fresh veggies. They also describe their tuna as wild caught. Sounds like a decent way to describe eating fresh, right? According to a lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California, it's not. The suit claims the ingredient the chain describes as tuna is actually void of any tuna and is made up of something else entirely. An attorney representing the plaintiffs in the case describes the so-called tuna as a mixture of various concoctions that do not constitute tuna, yet have been blended together to imitate the appearance of tuna. Although the plaintiffs or their representatives have yet to disclose the exact ingredients found in the samples, which they took from multiple California locations, they're claiming the lab testing and DNA results prove the product is made from anything but tuna. Their attorney went on to say, we found that the ingredients were not tuna and not fish. So how did this claim come about? And who are the plaintiffs? The suit was originally filed in January of 2021 by plaintiffs Karen Danoa and Nalima Amin from California. I hope I'm saying those names right. The two accused the company of fraud, intentional misrepresentation, as well as unjust enrichment. The two claim they were tricked into buying food items that wholly lacked the ingredients they reasonably thought they were purchasing. They also say that Subway is saving substantial sums of money in manufacturing the products because the fabricated ingredients they use in place of tuna cost less money, and that they paid premium prices for an ingredient that they prize for all its health benefits. A footlong tuna sandwich costing about a dollar or more than a cold cut combo, for example. So to sum it up, the lawsuit claims consumers are consistently misled into purchasing the products for the commonly known and or advertised benefits and characteristics of tuna when in fact no such benefits could be had given that the products are in fact devoid of tuna. So what does Subway have to say about the claims? They've stuck to their guns and doubled down on their claims that their tuna sandwich is made up of quality wild caught tuna. A spokeswoman for Subway recently denied the validity of the claims by telling the New York Times, there is simply no truth to the allegations in this complaint that was filed in California. Subway delivers 100% cooked tuna to its restaurants, which is mixed with mayonnaise and used in freshly made sandwiches, wraps, and salads that are served to and enjoyed by our guests. Subway spokeswoman Maggie Truax later issued a longer statement from the company stating, these baseless accusations threaten to damage our franchisees, small business owners who work tirelessly to uphold the high standards that Subway sets for all of its products, including its tuna. Given the facts, the lawsuit constitutes a reckless and improper attack on Subway's brand and goodwill and the livelihood of its California franchisees. Indeed, there is no basis in law or fact for the plaintiff's claims which are frivolous and are being pursued without adequate investigation. Unfortunately, this lawsuit is part of a trend in which the named plaintiff's attorneys have been targeting the food industry in an effort to make a name for themselves in that space. Subway will vigorously defend itself against these and any other baseless efforts to mischaracterize and tarnish the high quality products that Subway and its franchisees provide to their customers in California and around the world and intends to fight these claims through all available avenues if they are not immediately dismissed. Fast forward to today and we have some updates to the controversial storyline. Recently, the New York Times conducted their own investigation, sending out some Subway tuna 
to an independent lab, and in that study, the lab found no evidence of tuna fish DNA in the samples. A representative for the lab stated the findings could mean one of two things. Either there's no tuna in the sandwiches, or whatever tuna is being used is so overly processed the lab could not make an identification. The New York Times report also noted that Inside Edition conducted a similar investigation back in February 2021 in which a lab did find tuna present in their respective samples. Subway recently responded to the New York Times tests by stating, DNA testing is simply not a reliable way to identify denatured proteins like Subway's tuna, which was cooked before it was tested. The restaurant chain also noted that the plaintiffs in the ongoing lawsuit have since backed down somewhat from their original complaint and are now focusing more on whether or not Subway is actually using 100% wild-caught skipjack and yellowfin tuna as the restaurant chain claims to do. If the words Subway and lawsuit sound familiar to you, your memory serves you well. In 2013, a lawsuit was filed against the chain claiming that its footlong subs were falsely advertised and actually only measured 11 and a half inches in length. The case was eventually tossed by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit in Chicago in which it was called utterly worthless. In 2017, Subway filed a lawsuit against the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation stating that the public broadcaster had defamed the chain in a report that claimed the company's poultry products were made up of only 50% chicken DNA. Recently, Ireland's Supreme Court ruled that as part of a protracted legal and tax battle, Subway's hoagie-style rolls did not meet the country's definition of bread. In the case of the tuna scandal, the plaintiffs are seeking compensatory and punitive damages as well as attorney's fees. They also call for Subway to end its mislabeling of its tuna sandwiches and surrender all profits it earned from the practice. They've retained the services of Lanier Law Firm, who has been involved in several high-profile lawsuits, such as the case in which 22 women claimed Johnson & Johnson's talcum powder product caused ovarian cancer. In 2018, a jury awarded the plaintiffs $4.69 billion in damages. As of now, the Subway Tuna case is still ongoing. So it's been a long saga of questions about the integrity of the chain's ingredients and its practices, a saga that will likely continue for some time. If you enjoyed this content, remember to subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.